I just made this painting, not just, but like a while ago. I love this painting that I made and I was gonna leave it up here because I put these hooks up there, but it's just kind of hanging pre pre precariously. And I want it to be eye level. Like I want it, can you even see that? Eye level, but it's, it's a little bit too high right now. So I'm gonna have to change that up. First of all, thank you all so much for all of your comments from last week's video, from all the comments that you post. I wanna connect with you guys and I think that's cool. And I love it when you guys post suggestions or like thoughts that have come up when you watch my videos. And one thing that I enjoy doing is answering your questions in the comments, um, which I have a question here that I wanted to bring up because, from last week's video, because it's a bit of a complicated question from Iptisam. Okay, wow. Firstly, just wow. <laughs> My brain is still trying to process all that I just watched. Incredible stuff. Like, I'm actually so proud of your acting growth. But yeah, this was so funny and quirky, but also so intense and knowledgeable. I'm definitely not an actor, but this helped me appreciate the craft on a much deeper level. And a big congratulations to you for being nominated for an award that's amazing. Also, I wanted to ask, as a viewer of the scene from Shame, I personally felt quite affected. Is it difficult for you as an actor? Is it difficult for you as an actor to, to detach from a scene after and what do you do that helps? I wanted to answer this on the vid on video because it's a bit complicated and I couldn't really type it in the comments. First of all, for some context, last week's video, if you haven't checked it out, you should in one of the links I'll put. I'll put a link in the description, but I'll also link it here somewhere, somewhere, one of those like extension links. In that video last week, I talked about this, the scene I did from class, from acting class, the week prior from a movie called Shame. As I said in last week's video, that scene was very intense. And so I showed a clip of it because then I went into talking about acting books and what helped me with that scene. But to answer your question, it's not challenging to get out of it when you use the right, when you're strategic with what you're tapping into. Something I also talked about in last week's video was the uh, technique called transferring, which is discussed in two of the books I mentioned in last week's video. But the general consensus is that I use an experience from my own life and I transfer that to the experiences that the character is going through because I don't know what it's like to be in Sissy's position in the film Shame. I have never been in that position. I don't even have a brother. I definitely don't have a brother who has a sex addiction. So that was a really complicated place to go. Not to mention that that relationship sometimes crosses into like a lover-lover relationship. Um, and not just familial, which is complicated and of course not normal for many people. In order for me to play this character, I had to be able to understand the need to cross that line. And I think for me, it was, it seemed to be that she was just so desperate for love in any form, in any way, and it didn't matter who it was from. And to her, love meant something physical. It didn't just mean something else. And so when she doesn't get it, it is so much more heartbreaking for her because she doesn't give it to herself. And so I needed to go back into my own life and find a time where that emotional idea was was true for me. But the key is that it is no longer true today. So I don't feel worthless. I don't feel like I'm not worthy of love. I'm absolutely worthy of love. But there was a time in my life where I didn't feel that way. Yes, I used a particular point in my life that was really challenging, but the important thing is to use something that I have already worked through in therapy or with, with people I love and trust because you don't want to use something that is so painful still that you don't know what you're doing. You have no control really over the emotion. It can overtake you and then you can't act. So yeah, I was fine. I was completely fine afterwards. In fact, I was actually really quite pleased because I was really happy that I was able to bring a performance out that was that compelling. So keep that in mind. I just wanted to clarify that. I like answering questions for you and I even I like it even more when I can dive into them in, in the form of a video. So comment the questions you have down below and I'll do I'll answer them in a future video.
It's now Sunday and Ben and I just had a an interesting discussion about the phrase you can start anywhere and end up anywhere. And I'm curious to know your thoughts on this because I want to get some other perspectives. The key things to keep in mind here is that one, Ben's not here to speak for himself so I'm going to do um, the best I can, but two is I'm very much an idealist and very optimistic and I have a very I, I like I choose to see the opportunities rather than the obstacles I, I choose to see obstacles as opportunities which I think is a healthy approach to life in general Ben does too Ben has that same approach but he is much more of a realist he likes to see the facts and say here is the facts and here are the reasons why in many situations you cannot end up anywhere anyone can do anything kind of thing is, is sort of how he took that phrase and he doesn't like that phrase because he thinks from what we just discussed he thinks it's too blanket of a statement you can't end up anywhere you know there are certain things that confine you to be honest that's a good point <laughs> but to me the the phrase you can start up anywhere and end up anywhere doesn't mean oh me Brittany raymond i can be an astronaut even if I decided right now to drop everything that I'm doing and to become an astronaut, I can absolutely become an astronaut because there are so many factors that are working against me. And in Ben's defense, what he's saying is that there is sometimes too many blocks that prevent you from doing that thing. But what I think is if there's something that's calling you, if there's something that you just love to, that you want to explore further, instead of thinking of it like, you know, I want that thing, I want that goal, rather thinking, what is it, what would it be like for me to go after that? And then you can see where you end up along the way, because where you end up is never really where you expect. There's always going to be surprises, there's always going to be things you don't see coming. And that's what, to me, the phrase, you can start anywhere and end up anywhere means. And I guess what I'm asking you, people watching, is one, do those two perspectives make sense to you? And two, is there anything you can add to that? What does the phrase any, uh, you can start anywhere and end up anywhere mean to you? And also, why does it mean that way to you? Like to me, it was an opportunity. It was an interesting way to approach a problem. You know, okay, there's an issue, there's something in front of me. I can, I, I'm currently here in these set of circumstances and I would like to be there. How can I get there or as close to there as I possibly can get given the circumstances I'm given right now. And I, and I think that that's the opportunistic personality in me, the, or the rather the optimistic part of me, the idealist in me is like, yeah, you can find a way, there's always a way. But I think the way that I was explaining it to Ben was in like factual terms, like you can be anywhere, you can absolutely get there no matter what. And I think that that ha has a bit too much of, a f of an idealistic approach, like you do need to ground it in reality. And so that's why Ben's perspective is helpful. What? Do you approve this message? Yeah, I think you covered it pretty, pretty fairly. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> if anything, I think that blending the realist in Ben and the idealist in me is probably the best approach because you can be optimistic, but still have a realistic idea of what's what to expect. I like to, dis to discuss these things because I find them interesting and I'm curious to know your thoughts. Is it, is this video really, really dark? I probably should have bumped up the ISO. I used this like sticky tape stuff.
Come on, truck. Get the fuck in the right gear. Get that go. Oh, I had no boost. I had no boost. Austin, 